This is going to be called, Are You a True Soldier? If you're going to be a good soldier in spiritual battles, then you are going to have to know that you are truly saved. So this is going to be a study on how to be sure that you are born again, saved, sealed, secure, and going to heaven when you die. Are you sure that you are a soldier in the Lord's army? So in this study, I'm going to talk to you just like I would talk to someone that didn't know how to be saved. Okay, the first thing is who needs to be saved? And the place that I would like for you to go to is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. So, Jesus Christ died for our sins. So, who needs to be saved? All sinners need to be saved, and everyone is a sinner. In Romans 3.10, it says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ecclesiastes 7.20, there, For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And then John 3.36 shows us how the wrath of God is abiding on us. That is, if you're lost, if you're in your sins. So if a man is going to be saved, then he needs to know why he needs to be saved. So who needs to be saved? A sinner does. Many times when you give someone the gospel and you ask them, are you going to go to heaven when you die? The answer they give is, well, I think so. I'm a pretty good person. I n never have killed anybody. I've not committed adultery and... Things like that. But they don't get it. They don't understand they are a sinner. They don't understand that telling a lie is a sin that they deserve to be sent to hell for, for eternity. So was there a time when you knew that you were a sinner and came to Jesus Christ for him to be your payment for all your sins? So who needs to be saved? A sinner. Next, what saves a person? Looking back at 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, till that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So notice that Paul said the word received. Have you received the gospel? Many atheists and people involved in false religions believe that Jesus Christ was a real person that he died on the cross, and that he was buried. However, they aren't receiving him as their Savior. They're not receiving him as their own personal Savior to be the payment for their sin. If you have been saved, then there was a point when you knew that you were a sinner. You knew you needed to be saved, and you knew that Jesus Christ is not only real, but that he died, he shed his blood for your sins, he was buried and resurrected, and you came to him and believed on him, and his death, burial, and resurrection to be your payment for sin. Paul says in Acts 16, 31, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So notice how it says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have your faith resting on Jesus Christ to be your payment for sin? Romans three twenty five, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. So salvation is not made possible by good deeds that you do. Ephesians 2.8 For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it has to do with 
faith. It has to do with believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, not putting faith in the good things that you're doing every day. Romans 4, 5, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Romans ten thirteen through 15 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Anyone who comes to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and wants to believe the gospel and be saved, then God's going to save him because he's a whosoever God. And it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. And Paul gives you the gospel there in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So, who needs to be saved? A sinner. What saves a person? Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now next, when are you eternally saved? If you look back at 1 Corinthians 15, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Now look at this, by which also ye are saved. Present tense are saved. It doesn't say shall be saved. So the moment you believe the gospel, you're presently saved. Ephesians 1.13 says, And whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So the moment you believe the gospel, the Holy Spirit sealed you. If you have believed the gospel, then you have already been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You don't have to do something crazy like speak in tongues first, as they try to get you to say. You don't have to do all these other things to get the Holy Spirit. You've already got it. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved. It is the power of God. Notice again it says, which are saved presently saved, presently having eternal life. So once again, notice it says, which are saved. And then in 1 John 5, 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So you can know that you currently have eternal life, according to 1 John 5, 13. John three fourteen through 16, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Eternal life is a present possession for everyone who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have eternal life today, then you can't lose it tomorrow. And if you did lose it tomorrow, then it was never really eternal life to begin with. Now next, wherein do you stand? You're saved. You got saved because you were a sinner. So you believe the gospel. And then... You just found out, if you didn't already know, that you presently got eternal life when you believe the gospel. So now, wherein do you stand? So your standing in Christ is sinless. You may not be living sinless. Well, you're not living sinless. I know you're not because you still have the same sinful flesh that you had before you were saved. But your standing in Christ is sinless whether or not you sin today or not. Because the Lord doesn't look at the works of your flesh to determine your standing or your eternal destination. Romans 5, 1 through 2 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's our peace offering. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. 
So 1 Corinthians 15, 1. If you want to go back there again, it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. So the moment you believe this gospel, you'll stand in perfection in the Lord even when you're walking in the flesh because you have two natures. You have the new man that you got when you were saved and you got the old man. That's the flesh. And when it comes to your standing, the new man is perfection in the Lord. Romans 4, 6 through 8 says, Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So these verses are saying, God's imputing right, righteousness to you without you having the works. Pretty much Jesus Christ lived a sinless life and the moment you believe the gospel, you're getting his record because he lived a perfect, sinless life. And then it says, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Not only is he going to give you the righteousness of Jesus Christ, but he's also not going to apply the sins that you did after you get saved to your account. So your standing will be sinless. So at salvation... You are not only given the Lord's righteous record, but also after that moment, the Lord no longer counts any of your sins to your account, whether they be in the past, things you did before you were saved, or in the future, things you've done after you're saved, because Jesus Christ fulfilled all righteousness for us. In Matthew 5, 17, it says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill Matthew three fourteen and 15, But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. So we don't need to be water baptized to get saved because Jesus was already water baptized. I don't have to keep the law to be saved. Jesus kept the law. Jesus did every good thing and abstained from every bad thing. The, this perfect record of his was given to me when I believed the gospel. Jesus went all those years, up until he was, what, 33 years old, never sinned. And you get that perfect, sinless record of his put on your record when you believe the gospel. So imagine that you have a folder in heaven. And if the Lord pulled out your folder and opened it up, he wouldn't see any of the sins before or after you got saved. He would see the Lord's perfect record. And that's why you get to go to heaven. Because you've got righteousness applied to your record that's not your righteousness. You see, you don't have good enough righteousness to earn your way into heaven. So it had to be given to you. And the Lord gave it to you as a free gift the moment you believe the gospel. So a Right now, the Lord is offering to every person on this earth the free gift of salvation. And he will give the righteous record of his son to anyone that believe on his son. Romans 10, 13 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So if you're crazy enough to try to go around and make your own righteousness, try to be good enough to get to heaven, then you've not submitted yourself into the righteousness of God. And the righteousness of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us. God made Jesus Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus never sinned, but why did he do it? Look at this next phrase, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So the moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you become as righteous as God when it comes to your standing. And that's how God sees you. And that's how it's possible for you to get into heaven when you die. But next, which sin will send a person to hell? And the only sin that does this, when it comes right down to it, is the sin of dying in your unbelief. 
In John 3.36 it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. John 3.15, That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So don't think you just go to hell because you're a liar or a thief or a murderer or adulterer or anything else. You go because you died without believing the gospel to get those sins paid for. I mean, one little white lie would cause you to go to hell if you don't get that sin paid for. Now, no matter what you did before you were saved, any of those sins can be paid for. You're not going to be sent to hell for any particular sin, but you will be sent to hell for dying in your unbelief without getting those sins paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, say you've committed some horrible sins after you were saved, which I'm sure you have. Those sins aren't going to send you to hell because you have believed the gospel. So quit looking at yourself to determine whether or not you're going to go to heaven. You need to look to the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that did the work. He's the one with the righteous record, not you. You see, no matter how many good things you do, you're never going to have a perfect spotless record. Because at one point you fell short of the glory of God. But I hope this has helped some people gain assurance in their salvation. And one of the first steps in becoming a disciple of the Lord is to know that you're saved because you can't be a soul winner when you really don't know you're saved. Be hard to Go up to a bunch of people and tell them how to be saved when you don't even know you're saved yourself. It'd be hard to read your Bible every day because you're like, I don't even know if I'm saved or not. How can I read my Bible? You know, all things like this that people go through, they can't serve correctly unless they know they are truly born again. So go over these verses. Memorize these verses in your mind and let yourself know that you've been born again.